Good morning, Moti. Ah! Lili Nishma Simi Mero Siri Huh? Good morning, Rab Boy Sai. Lili Nishma Simi Mero Siri Huspos Mordechai. This is an MDY starter kit. You have here Philip Boyer, Mo Landy, and Mark Ashkenazi. They have the dog as a starter, they have the wine, the cave, and they have meat. They serve you with and then I got this picture from Hillel Boyer. Then Mark Ashkenazi sends me afterwards, he goes, I'm trying to recruit them for Yvamas Chele Gimel of our drill. <laughs> as if they fell out. I don't think they fell out, but okay, nice. But boy, say, listen to this. That was not Mando. That's his own little uh, whatever. Check this out. We were talking about Amy Kala. Listen, we have our own Mordechai Seltzer giving us a tour. You ready? Here we go. So, Rabbi, this historically is where Emet Kaila, the fight of the Vidun Goliath, happened. I would have been on the side of Ben Israel. Across the valley over there would have been the side of the Pilish team. And in the middle, that's where the field, where the field is, that's where would have been the fight of David and Goliath. Shkoya. And this is the corn fine kids from Switzerland. Switzerland! That's where the Stefanskis are from. They know that their father, Eli, doesn't miss a day. And here go the kids. Good morning, Rabbi Zay. It's a universal language. Good morning, Rabbi Zay. This is from Babalad. Alev Dal Jin. Admor Shlito. L'chvoid Admor Shlito. I hope the Rebbe is well. Thank you for teaching us the Rosh Tevis of Alev Dal Jin. It increases our ability to be Oyved Avoy the Zara. I think it's fitting as I believe that I was the first to address the Rebbe Admor Shlito as a Dmar. See email Shabbos Davkuf Lamed. The Chief Choytu Machti. Harry Shalom. <laughs> Shabbos Kuflamid. Chemi. Listen to this. I love this. Just wanted to say, Hadrun Allah Meseches Eruvin. Unbelievable. People are still doing other Meseches. I think it's a Geval Kazakh. Check it out. Join Noam and myself doing Chazara. You could even open up your vomits and start from the beginning. Do it two speed. It's Geval stuff. Dear Belly, here's a photo of my special son, son Shaya, sitting in the Shabbos room in the hospital. Between, not on Shabbos, but in the Shabbos room, between appointments, not wasting his time, just doing the daf. He loves you, and you really made a huge difference in his life. He doesn't miss a day. May you have only nachas of your children. Shloimi Spira, London. Yishkoyach, Shaye. Now check this out. This is our one and only Shloimi Fort... Fort Shine, right? Fort Shine. Sham. 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 Or Shine. Howard Sham. Sham? There he is. For Sham. He's 17 years old. And it says like this. Dear Rebelli, this morning you get, you're, you get over here. You get over here to Shlomi For Sham. I've attached a video of his Nichna Siyan Yotasoid. Basically, he's on, this is on Purim. Completely drunk. He appeared doubtful when you asked him if the Shia has changed his life. I think this video is pretty conclusive. He's giving me permission to send you the video. I also asked him as I met him coming in today to the shir. I think it was after this encounter on Purim that I decided to join the shir. Does he get an article in the Suffolk cult of Elimelech Goldberg? So Elimelech Goldberg joined the shir because he saw his enthusiasm when he was a shikir. Here he goes, Rabbi Boisai! <laughs> I, he doesn't know that they're filling him in. Now he does. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Rav Yisai, the first Chodesh is L'schos Shiduchim. The first part of Chodesh, sorry, the part of Chodesh that's for the coil. First part of Chodesh, Lid Nishmas Rav Zachai Yishim and Akoyin Walerstein Zechut Tzadik Levrocha by his kids, by Aaron Freeman. L'schos continue panels of Siyad Shmaya and Asaf the Rebelli. The third one, the Boyer family. We just saw Hillel. 
Anybody? Shidduch. Uh, we should go back to this picture a second. Look at this guy. He's a Gishmaka looking guy. Great guy. The guy all the way on the right, holding the wine. Top, top guy. Okay, and he does the daf. Where is the thing? Okay, by the Boyer family. Eli Weinberg, Shalom. Paras Achoy, this is the Walkenstein family. By the Lach and Lebevik families, like in Jersey, because the Torah is the best gula. And the last, last day of my favorite Parnas HaChodesh, Li'ilu Nishmas, Chayo Bas Yosef. As a chorus HaToiv, Tashem, and as a schus for continued health and bracha. Give Valdik. Rabbi Yisai, here we go. We have a jam packed. Today is 30 days in the Oymer. <laughs> 39 days in the Oymer. Today is 39 days in the Oymer. We have a jam packed daf. Mamish, a lot of agata. And then on Omid Beis, we go into a sugi of Saris, Yishmaka stuff. Oh, I want to say this. I had a lot, a lot, I know. Shimon is not here, right? Shimon Solway. I had a Givaldik of when I found out that my wife told me, you're not going to believe this. The Solway, you know, they just, uh, their daughter got engaged. But another daughter, a 19 year old daughter, was flying to America and she's going to Muncie. But she didn't have where to stay. So she said, you know, we should go to Mishpacha. Who do we go to Muncie? We go to Mark Ashkenazi's house. She stayed there for Shabbos and Mark just let me imagine there's Gavaldika times and then they're, they're sitting, schmoozing, drinking coffee with his wife and her and every, not him. Yeah. But they had a great time. So no, it's Mishpacha. Like, they never met each other. They don't know each other. But Mark takes care of the boys here. He comes, gives them merch and this and that. They feel Mamish Mishpacha. They, they were, they were very, uh, very disappointed he was supposed to come for the bar mitzvahs. Uh, mishpacha. I mean, don't call up Mark now when you... Fine. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> By the way, we're on Daf Ayn Ches on the base, and Ayn Ches is very, very negative to this Matzah Shabbos because this Matzah Shabbos shear is going to be given on Ayn Ches Street in Yerushalayim. Ha Ayn Chet. Uh, so Ayn Chet 20, Yeshivas Nesivas Aaron, you can punch it in, Nesivas Aaron, everybody's invited. Uh, don't let me down because I have to. Show my shver that more than he thinks that's like in Chicago. Every time he comes to the shir, there's seven, eight people. We're gonna show him in your shrine. It's gonna be a big oil. Okay, so there is a parking lot there, but not for a thousand people. There's a parking lot, huh? No, it's right next to the kotel over there, like in Nevi'im, right off of uh, Fishachad. You make a little left, like in, the, in that neighborhood over there, next to the Iria. You know the Iria? Okay, fine. Put it in ways. Ha'ayin, you could put ha'ayin het. H-E-T comes up, or Yeshivas Nesivas Iron. Great. I have a riddle, but this is a difficult one. How is it possible for a Saris Adam, we learned about a Saris Adam, he, a guy's in a car accident, he's not allowed to get married, he's not allowed to be married, but he's allowed to do Yibum. How is it possible he could do Yibum if he can't be married to a woman? There is a case. It's a very posh of the case, but it's a good riddle. I mean, how is it possible that Saris Adam gets married? Could he get married? Yeah, every Bamram Bloy, right? To who? So what if the Ivama is a Gayaris? Huh? No, 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 no Rabamram Bloy. We went, through, we went through the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, yeah, it was a shirum, yeah. Guy has his soup the whole thing. Later on in life, says the Gemara. So we were in the middle of a story here. Why were Gavainim? Well, you guys were both missing. We spoke about two shirum. Why were Gavainim? Ostracized and not able to come into Kahal. So we're going through the whole sugya. There was a there was a famine. David Amelch tried to figure out what the problem is. Is because they didn't they promised Zdaka, they didn't give Arayis, no, Avadizar, no. And now he says ten lines from the bottom, Omar, Ena Dovatali Elobi. It's it's my it's on me now to figure it out. Miyad Vayivakish Dov is Pnei Hashem. It's on me, it's my my Achrayis. So he went to seek out Hashem. Ma'i, what does that mean? Here we go. The Kayan wears a Chayshin with the stones that represent all the Shvatim. And if you look closely at the stones, they have different letters. Ruvain is Aleph, Shimon is Mev, the Kitzer, and it, it lights up and does, and that's how it communicates through what? Shimon is Bez, you're right. Levi's, Raham, Yehuda, Zio, the kids are okay. Yeah, we went through it once. You're right. And there's a little piece of cloth they say in there, and that is how it works. 
Siv Hasan Vishaloi Bemishpat Urim Lufni Hashem. So you see that he went to ask the Urim Vitum. Vayoimir Hashem El Shol. So the Hashem said it's because El Shol. It's because of Shol. Vel Beis Had Domim. And because of the blood, Al Asher Hemis Ha Givainim. Because Shol killed the Givainim. Says Gemara, okay, I understand part of it. El Shol, Shalinis Patka Alacha. The reason why this famine, because the Gala Dar Shol didn't have the proper Hespit. Where do we find that Shaul killed the Gevayim? The famous story where Shaul got rid of all the Kohanim and Noiv. The Gevayim, they were wood choppers, water carriers, and they were busy bringing the water to the Kohanim. And that's how they made a living. So the Torah says, since you took away their parnasa, it's as if you killed them. The Marshall says a little deeper, he says, until now they were busy with supporting Kohanim who were doing Avedas Hashem. So they were like being Avedas Hashem. Once you took away that schos, then they're no longer alive because they no longer have the schos of supporting the Kohanim. Says the Gemara, something doesn't make sense here. The first part of the Pasuk says that he didn't have the proper hesped, meaning he's a chash of a person, shol, and how come you wore a mask with him? A second later, you're saying he's a killer. He's a murderer. In First, I'm going to do a mishpat. But on the flip side, there's a mishpat, but it goes both ways. When there's a mishpat, I also bring out the good in the person. You hear? It's a tremendous insight. Hashem is looking at the bad. He did something bad, but you know what? Let's bring up all the good he did. Look at all the good he did. The Bali Musa say from over here, a quick word, and it's very important, that if somebody, for instance, has an Avera he's struggling with, and he controls himself, he controls himself one month, two months, and then at the end he's Nikshal. For the three months that he controlled himself, he gets a tremendous amount of Sechar. Yeah, there's Mishpat on the, at the end, but there's going to be Sechar for when he was waiting. Was like, on, this, on this thing they say it. Omar David. Shol, what, what do I do? Says, says David Amelk, we have two problems here. I saw from the Urim Tumim two things. First of all, they killed, he killed the Givayin and we got to do something. We got to make it up to them. Second of all, there's no, first of all, there's no Hespit. So he says, on the first problem, I have nothing to do. Omar David, Shol, Nafkulu, Trace Yarchi Shata. It's already 12 months since he died. Says Rashi, it's not 12 months. It's 30 years. What 12 months? The point is that it's not a proper thing to start making a hesped to somebody 12 months later. So certainly not 30 years later. It's not covered for the mace. You can't, you can't make a hesped today, 30 years later. Okay. But the Nesinim, these Givainim, let's call them in. Let's see what they want. Maybe we could compensate them. Give them a nice compensation package. A hundred million dollars. Each guy goes and walks away with a hundred mil- a million dollars. And Shalom Yisrael. What can I do for you? Now you give a bracha so it starts raining again. We have no money, no gold. Uh, fine. We don't want money. No money is going to help us. What we want is, we want to murder and kill seven sons of Shaul. We'll hang them Lashem. He tried, he tried, he tried to talk them out of it. What is seven? You want to kill seven people? What are you nuts? Money, take money. You live like mentioned. No, Yeshua Yifin not seven. Omar, Shloisha Simonim Yeshbu Mazu. We, Klai Yisrael, have three simonim. Harachmonim. We're achmonim. I heard a story by the partisans. A guy 
who he, he, he witnessed his entire family be, being murdered by the Nazis in Machshima. So he went, he was able to escape, and he became a partisan, and he, they captured a Nazi. And they interrogated the Nazi, and then they gave this guy a knife, and they said, go, cut out his stomach, take your nakama. He couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. But he, he witnessed that this, these Rishayim, they killed his whole family. He couldn't do it. Rachmanim. Vaybaishanim. The Goyim Lichasadim. We don't have to go into the Gemilas Chesed. All the Gemachim. All the Gemaras that people give. Random strangers. Where do you have such a thing? So, person. Here, here's a $50 <laughs> gift. I don't know you. I've never met you. I'll never meet you. Here, Chesed. Mark Ashkenazi. Taking a girl for whatever. Okay, Chasadim. His wife. No, he paid for the food in the house. And da, 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 da. His wife took care of the whole thing. Yeah. For generations. You can get married to, but not who? Not these Givainim who don't have Rachmanus. Seven kids of Shaul, we want to hang here. And in fact, in order to save Kla Yisrael, they got their wish. I believe this is the Mipiboishas, what we learned in Brachas. Mipiboishas was the greatest, he was Dovra Melech's Rebbe. Remember, with the, their hands were dirty. The five sons of Michal Bashal, she Yodo La Adriel, Ben Barzilai, Hamachorlossi. How did she give birth to them? She was married to, to David. To, so they say the Pshad is Pashat, she adopted them. She, they were really the kids of Merav. She was Megadal them. We're going to see in a second. Maishnahani. So why these seven? What do they deserve? Omar Ravuna Evrim Lifnei Aaron. They brought the, the, the Bnei Shaul in front of the Aaron. Kol Aaron koltoi lemisa, kol she'ein Aaron koltoi lechayim. If the Aaron grabbed them, so to speak, something happened over there, then you know this guy goes to death, this guy goes lechayim. There's a mice with the Rebbe and Ebshitz that they accused a bunch of people for murder. So Rebbe and Ebshitz said, he has a Gavalik idea how to, how to catch the murder. He went to the judge, in front of the judge, he says he has a special chicken, and whoever touches the chicken, if you're a murderer, the chicken screams like a, like a nut. So he has a chicken in a box, he covers the box, and he tells these 10 people to line up, put your hands on the chicken. So they all put their hands on the chicken, and the chicken doesn't scream. All 10 of them. So Rebbein Sanevich says, okay, now, everybody pick up your hands and show the judge. And Everybody picked up their hands. One guy's hands were white. Everybody else's hands were black because he put charcoal on the chicken. And the murderer was scared to touch the chicken. So he didn't touch the chicken. And Mela, he wasn't, he wasn't coiled at it. When I heard the story, I was very upset because I thought I was machadish this. In Beis Yitzchak in Square, when I was 10 years old, there was a guy that stole from the pushka. A kid in the fourth grade. So they came to us. I was in the older grade. And they said that the kid... The kid, the kid, somebody stole from the pushka today. So I lined up all the kids. And I said, listen, the kid that stole from the pushka has a chocolate chip cookie on his yarmulke. So one kid went like this. Ah, right. But this is, okay. It wasn't a chadish, the chiddush. So the Gemara. Another He had Rahmanas on the son of Yonason. How could you show favoritism when it comes to something like this? No. They're all going to death. We have to see who dies, who does. We need seven. So we put all of them through. And because David Melch asked for Rahmanas, Darin didn't take him. Says the Gemara of Akati Masi Panim Yesh But at the end of the day, explains Rashi, unbelievable. If you take out a guy, one person, you dive in on Ruvain, and he comes off the Aaron, you know what's going to happen? Somebody else is going to come instead of him. So now you just cause somebody else to die. How are you allowed to do that? 
which there's another story. Reb Mordechai Pergamatsky says, I saw they, they bring it in Mamish and the Sugi as well. What would you do in such a case? They asked Reb Mordechai Pergamatsky in the, by the Nazis. Somebody's son was caught by the Nazis. So they went to him, they said, listen, you, you could pay the Nazi guy, the guy in charge, you pay him $1,000, he releases your son. But he needs 100 kids in the, in the, in the, in the, in lockup. So he's going to grab another Yiddish kid and put him in there. He'll make the 1,000, your kid is saved, but he takes another, are you allowed to do that? Yes or no? No, what are you guys tying up? L'choy or not? So Ramadcha said, I don't know, I don't have Svarim with me. So he said, but come on. He says, I can't pass him. She says, that means I can't do it. He says, I'm not telling you you can't do it. I just don't, I can't tell you. So the guy left his kid in there and he said, Hareza like a oila. He said, if, if you're not telling me the psak, but it seems like the psak is that it's also. That's what, I, from what I saw, it seemed like it was also. I'm sure there's a machloikis in it, but for the most part, it's... It's awesome. He asked that he asked that it should uh, that, that the iron shouldn't work. Asked the Gemara, um, what happened? These seven people they died because of the avera of Shaul. Shaul did something. Now these seven kids, the descendants, died. By the way, the Ritva sticks in here that obviously these seven deserved Misa for whatever reason. Let's say the Oivan Kibbutz Aveim at one point, whatever it is, they deserve Misa. So now the Akash Baruch took care of them. So why, so why was David not, why was he diving on people? Because he didn't want him to die in that kind of death, as we're going to see, it was a terrible death. It's better to take away a whole pasuk. That a child doesn't die because of his father. And over here we're, we're killing a child because of Shaul the father. But don't make a chil Hashem. No? Oh. So there's a concept called a rasha. Yeah, it's a pasuk from the Torah. But Kleistro's dying. Everybody's dying now. So I could kill seven people and save millions, and I desire Rasha. Chachamim have the ability to be oikir davim and atayra when they see need and fit at a at a very specific time. And we have here in addition chil Hashem. Vatikach ritzbo v'sayis asak v'tateu al atzur el atzur mitchilas kotzer ad nitach mayim alim. The Gemara is going to say that the goyim were very upset at Klai Yisro. How is it? that Shaul took away their parnasa and, and killed them in a way and nobody did anything about it. So over here, you, as we're going to see, the Goyim were satisfied. Oh, this, this din v'dayin in this, in this place. Somebody does something wrong, they get punished. There, look at the seven kids, they got punished. Says the Gemara, All the way until the end of the famine. For six months, the mother of some of these children Lay down there by the bodies and made sure that the animals, the wild animals, didn't touch the hanging bodies. They hung them for six months straight. They hung outside. <speaking in Hebrew> she didn't let the birds, <speaking in Hebrew> to rest on them, <speaking in Hebrew> and not the wild beast at night. And what's very, very interesting is that David Amelech ended up marrying her, says the Yushalmi over here. Dovan Amelech saw what a powerful woman she is. She sat there for six months. Six months. Rain and shine. Well, not rain. But night, cold and, and heat. How did they leave the bodies there? Again, this is a passage that says, don't let the body stay overnight. <laughs> Certainly not six months. Before we're talking about Chil Hashem. Now to talk about Kiddush Hashem. It's better to make a Kiddush Hashem and take out a posse from the Torah of Haras. Look at these guys. Look at these Jews. Look at these. They, 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 they chepid the Gerim Grurim, the, the Nesinim that weren't accepted in Klai or Gerim that are not accepted. Now they're saying, look at them, this justice. If, if they kill the royalty, certainly they're going to take care of the regular people. 
And if this is how they treat their guests, the geirim that are on the side, the chayt v'yaitim, certainly they'll take care of Klai Yisrael. When, if they, or, yeah. Certainly, if you chep a Klai Yisrael, they're going to take care of them. 150,000 new geirim came to Klai Yisrael. 150,000 new geirim came to Klai Yisrael. Elef Chaitzev Bahar, and he had all these extra people. Says the Gemara, who told you there's 150,000 Geirim the Dilmi Yisrael have? It doesn't say what nationality they were. Says the Gemara, let's all get It can't be from the Jews because he didn't make them slaves. Maybe they're just regular workers, daily, the daily salary guys, not Avadim. Because another positive. He made them into Avadim. Says, huh? Oh, I hear. Um, so what do we say about that? But Shlema Melech himself, that's because they had money. I don't know. Good cash. Good cash. Maybe it was an earlier time. Russia. Yeah. What does the Ritva say? He, hmm? he, he what? <clears throat> they came by, they were Megaya themselves and we didn't write it except them. The whole point was that you should be biased to God. So if that's a Tesla, that's a Tesla, that's the whole point. I hear. It's part of the Ritva. You say, what? They weren't accepted officially by the Besden. They were official. Jonathan Stefanski asked that Sirash, uh, you can't, <laughs> they didn't accept. Geirim. Let me see if this thing works. Where is it? Does it work? No? Here, point it to me. That light. Yeah, here, it worked. Like that. So now, uh, put it, it has a magnet. Put it on that, uh, on that box over there and I'll try to use it. Yeah, but you're not going to see it. I'm going to see it. Uh, it doesn't turn off. Forget it. Too far away. Now I wanted a place that you could see it. And I don't have to tell you to turn the, the slide. I don't have to say anything about slides. I just go like this. <laughs> just go like this and you'll see this. And even if it doesn't turn on, you'll hop. Okay. <coughs> we have to have a button here. Like a little... Z- huh? A wireless doorbell. Oh. Ding dong. Everybody's going to hear it. <laughs> A wireless zapper. Wow. <laughs> Tremendous. Garrison, people love you here. They mamish love you. <laughs> Actually, you have who has one? Donnie has a wireless zapper for the dog. For the dog. A collar. What a, let's give you a little collar. You have the doesn't have to be so hard. They have different levels. See, it didn't work for my dog though. Maybe it'll work for you. Okay. When you see him Zuck tomorrow, when you see him, Dabagaz Alayim. What, David, 400 years later, he made the Xer that you can't marry them. So this is a little bit hard to understand. You have to see the Pasuk a little bit. It's a little tricky. There was no, there's no Nesinim in the time of Moshe Rabbeinu. So what's the Gemara saying that Moshe Rabbeinu did it? So the way Rashi explains it, basically, it says in the Pasuk, Pasuk test, there's three categories in the Pesukim here. First it says, this Yisrael. There's a category of Klai Yisrael. Then there's a category of Gercha Shevekerev Machanecha. And then all of a sudden there's a category called Mechaitev Eitzecha Tshoi Mimecha. That's Moshe Rabbeinu saying. So the idea of Chaitev Eitzecha Tshoi Mimecha is another, you see they're not Gerim. They're the Chaitev Eitzim. It's not, it's a different category. Says so Gemara, so these kind of people, like Givayim, this idea of Chaitev Eitzecha we have already in the time of Moshe. Says Gemara, Moshe goes Allah Udara. Dov goes Allah Kuli Dara. Moshe was geyser, maybe just for that generation. David was geyser on the Gevainim forever. Says Gemara, but the Yeshua goes alayu. But the the Gevainim themselves, the Gzeira happened by Yeshua, the Chsiv Aidim Yeshua by Yirmahu on that day. Chayvayitim Shavim Ma'im Leidim Lemizbeach Hashem, Lemizbeach Hashem. Says Gemara, Yeshua goes up his man to be some English kaya. Yeshua worked them for the base of Mikdash. David goes up his man to be some English kaya. We're turning to Ayin on the base. Sponsored by Boishu Horn in honor of the Gold Star Multi Donut. Sponsored obviously in honor of Eli and the countless da da da. Bimei says the Gemara Bimei Rebbe Bikshu Lahatin Nesinim. Explains Rashi. There's a concept called Hefker Bezin Hefker. 
Bezin has the right to take away something from you. You have a slave, I'm taking it away. I'm Bezin, I can do whatever I want. So I'll, I'll take all these Avadim and free them, make them Jewish. Now, here's the question that we have in the entire sugya. I kind of mentioned it yesterday. Uh, and then what? They can marry into Klai Yisrael. But they're, they're, they're from the Shiva Saumais. Shiva Umais. Shiva Amim. What, what, what do you gain by freeing them? It seems like there is a heter for them. If they became Gerim all the way on day one, in the beginning, that, that's why they say in Ishitas Rashi. I mean, Tom argues, okay. We, the the Bezdin, have a, the ability to free slaves that are owned by the common folk. But we can't free the slaves of the Beis HaMikdash. Says Gemara, that's, this is actually an argument. Why? Because, So, since there's no Beis HaMikdash in the time of David, so in Mela or in time of Rebbe, then there's no, there's no problem. They, they didn't have to undo that part. The only part that was, that was, that was in effect was the, the slave part for the private people and that peasant could take care of. But Rebbe argued, says the Mishnah, Oy, I don't know who the sponsor for this Mishnah is, which is, I don't know, I have to go, you know what, it's probably the beginning of Arl. Let's see what we got here. Sorry, sorry. Oh, sponsor anonymously for schus for my wife and children. His wife and children, not my wife and children. Anybody's wife and children. Says the mission. Omar Bishwa. Shamati Shasaris Choilets the Cholzin Ishtoi. So here we go. There's we're talking about a Saris here. Somebody who's sterile can have children. So Rabbi Yeshua says, I heard once halacha that somebody that can have children, chaylitz v'chaltz in the By the way, we're talking about chalitza, so I brought for the very first time here in Eretz Yisrael, I think it's the very first time, period, that I'm introducing this amazing chalitza shoe that's mamish kosher, I think, l'chat This is exactly what it looks like in Bezdin. Piece by piece. It has the long straps, it has this little guy here, all commissioned and fashioned by Yaakov Yosef Ayal, the guy in charge of the merch. He's very, very talented. Look at this. It has all the holes in the back. Mom, if you look online, it's exactly what a chalitza shoe looks like. It's made out of leather. It's not galoshes, and it actually fits my foot. So one day I'll put it on when we really learn Hilchas Chalitza, but here it is. It's beautiful. I don't, I don't see it so well on the screen, but okay, I'm sure everybody else does. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Says the Gemara, the Mishnah. Hasaris Chaylitz v'Chaltim Lishtay. He's he's in the parish of Chalitza. Vasaris, and I also heard Loi Chaylitz v'Loi Chaltim Lishtay. He should not perform Chalitza. He's not in the parish at all. And if he dies, you don't do Chalitza to his wife. And if his brother dies, he's not a good candidate to do Yibam and Chalitza. So look at these Pesukim for a second. It says, One Pesuk says that the Yavam has to be able to be making shame. He's a Saras. So he's not in this Pesuk. A. B. It says, The whole point of Yibam, to be Misyabim, is to have a shame Lachim. That the guy that died, his name shouldn't be erased. But his name was erased. He's a Saris. The guy that died, if he was a Saris, he died as a person who can't have children anyway. So his name was erased. You're not, you can't help him. So Memela, those two people, to be a Yavam when a person is a Saris, or to be a Yavam for somebody that died a Saris, they're both not in these Pesukim. Yeah? We're talking about two people here. Again. L'hakim shame, the guy performing the Yibum cannot be a Saras because he has to be making shame. He has to be able to have children. And the guy that you're performing Yibum for, the dead man, cannot be a Saras because Lo Yimachash Maimi Yisrael, his name was erased before he died. Omer Rebbe Kiva, Ani Who's Rebbe Kiva to Rebbe Yeshua? His Talmud. 
says Rabbi Kiva the Talmud, let me try to explain Rabbi. Saris Adam, if a guy chas v'shalom was in an accident, he's a Saris Adam, just this morning I saw, it's a terrible, terrible thing, we should never know from Saris, but let's say chas v'shalom, somebody has the machla, and they tell him, here, we'll give you a little chemotherapy, radiation, and you'll never have, you'll never have children again. Is that a Saris Adam? And it looks like most Achroinim hold that it is. It's a Saris Adam. That he, it's not B'day Shemaim. He took a, a potion that yes, it healed him and it's Pikuach Nefesh and it works. But since it has a side effect, it's not Negea to his disease. Because we also discussed if he has a disease there and the doctor ch- uh, switches something, that might be B'day Shemaim. Because the, the disease was in that area. But since the disease is somewhere else, the liver, let's say, and he takes his stuff and it ruins his, his ability to have children, that could be Sarah Sodom. And Mimele can't be, lo- it's also for him to love it like all. He imagined the Yisurim. He has to get divorced. Or he can't get married afterwards. He has to marry Gyaris. So Rabbi Kiva explains, if it happened later on in life, he could perform Chalitza. He could be the Yavim performing Chalitza. He, and if that guy himself dies, his brother could do Chalitza to his wife. There's one time and place in, in his life that he was able to have children. But he was born like that. He was, it's a disease that he has. What was it called? Kleifen, Kleinfelter. What? Kleinfelter, extra Kleinfelter, Kleinfelter, extra Kleinfelter. chromosome. Extra chromosome. That's what the guy said in the Sefer. That's his Rizchama. He never had the ability to have children. Rizchama. 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 He never had the ability to have children. Another one of his rabbeim. Loiki. I disagree. Rizchama. Rizchama. So it comes out of Mari the Gezach with Rebbe Kiva, that a Sris Chama, who could get married, think about it for a second, just, it was one of the riddles, but I thought it was too hard. A Sris Chama who could get married to people, because he's Sris Chama, he's born like that, cannot do Yibum Chalitza. A Sris Adam, who cannot get married to anybody, could perform Yibum, according to Rebbe Kiva. Rebbe Leza, I'm loiki. And he says, Rebbe Leza says, no, like we would think. El Sris Chama, a person who's born like that, Chalitza V'chalitza Nishtoi, he could get married and he could do chalitza and he could do a because they could do a certain refuah, they could heal him. The same guy who can't get married like all could also not perform chalitza. Hey, Rabbi Yeshua ben Meseira. Comes to Yeshua ben Meseira and says, I have a right to Rabbi Kiva. Uh, why does he say it? So that's, uh, is that considered... They, they weren't Merapi. He has a refuel. But today not. A guy said, to, right now, today, you can't have children. If he does X, Y, Z. Hey, Rabbi Shulman, that, that's good with the Rabbi Shulman said, Ben Menusas, Megusas. There's a person called Ben Megusas. Shahay Rabbi Shulman, Sris Adam. He was a Sris Adam. And they performed Yibum on his wife. The kind of Rabbi Kiva. That is Sris Adam. Since he has the Shas HaKoysher, he was once upon a time able to have children. So you're allowed to do Yibam to his wife. What about uh, the Yavam himself? Could he do Yibam? The Sri Sadam, could he do Yibam? No. He's, he's a Saras. He's a Sri Sadam. He can't do Yibam. Hasaris Lechazalim Yavim. So now we're going back to what we learned. Hasaris. What kind of Saras? Well, it depends. <laughs> if you're Rabbi Shua or Rabbi Leazar or Rabbi Kiva, because. One holds that Saras Adam could, and the other one holds that Saras Chama you could. So, whichever one you want to grab, Hasaras Loi Choyletz, Velay Miyavim, you can't do Chalitz Loi Yiv. Vechein Eilinus. What's the Eilinus? Here's the famous picture of Eilinus. It's Meloshin Ayol. She's a little bit of a Zachar who can't have children. Loi Choyletz says, Velay Misyabem is because it says in the Pasuk, Vahaya Bachar Asher Taylor. The Yivam has to have the ability to have children. Asher Taylor. Vahasaras Shachalas Levim Toy Loi Psala. If a Saris who shouldn't be performing Chalitza and Yibam does Chalitza, you didn't do anything. It's zero. It's like Stam, uh, I don't know what, going over to a random woman in the street and doing Chalitza to her. You didn't pass her. But if he performs Yibam, he's Amaras and he thinks he can do Yibam and Yinaladu. So what happens? She can't get married to Akai. And why? She's Mazana. She had relations with the Eshesach, Shalai Bemakim Mitzvah, with a brother in law. 
and not in a not in a place of yibum because she can't he can't be miyavim he's a saras he shouldn't be miyavim. If the islandess wants to get married to a Kayan, she could because the, the chalitza that was performed is zero. If she's a real Yevama, true Yevama, then she's a Grusha. Chalitza is like a get. But be a Pazlazer, and she be lost, so be less. Says the Gemara. Right? We learned, according to Rebbe Kiva, how do you make a Mamzer? Even a chayvei lav, even a lav creates a mamzer. So over here, this patsua daka, this guy that has major issues, he can't have children. So for him to get married, it's what? It's a lav. So that lav should not allow the kedushin to be chal. There shouldn't be any zika. Yeah? Mirdi shemilu rekiv adam chayvei lav and chayvei krisis damu v'chayvei krisis lav and chalitzav yivum ninu. You have a yavam who's a saris. There's no connection between him and the Ivama. Zero. There's no Zika because he's a lav. And a lav creates a mamzer. Creates a mamzer, no kiddushin, no Zika, no chalitza. So we have to say a few pshatim here. Either. What happened was the brother married a giyaris. The brother dies. So now who felt him libum? A giyaris. And that is okay for a person who's a p'tzudaka to marry. So it's not a lav. A ger is not considered part of the nation, and therefore he, the Saras, is, is mutter to marry somebody that's not in the Kahal. And what about, what about a Zakan? A guy that's uh, 95 years old, he can't have children? No, you could do even more so. You're, you're, it's all good and fine, but in terms of the mitzvah, he's in the mitzvah. He has the right to do it. <clears throat> exactly. He has the right to do it. You're right. It's not in the, what, what's the word? The, the, spirit, the, spirit. the spirit of the, the, the Torah. But he, it's mutter. <clears throat> so let him, why does he have to perform chalitza? It's a ger. She's a giyaris. He's allowed to marry her. Let him perform yibum. Ein hachinami. That's exactly what chalitza means. Chalitza means both. It means yibum and chalitza. So why did he grab the lesser of the two, the lesser chiddush? Rabbi Yeshua Chaylets, Amir Nami Chaylets. Rabbi Yeshua was talking about Chalitza, so he used the same word, but he meant also Yibum. The Ekanami, and I'll prove it to you. <laughs> it's not like I'm being doichik to Pshat. It's Mefurish in our Mishnah. Diktani, hey, Rabbi Yeshua, I'm saying, Rabbi Yeshua, I'm saying, Shoy Bishulayim, Sri Sodom, V'yib Moesish, V'yib Moesish Toy. There's actually Yibum. It says Mefurish in the Mishnah. Lekayim, Dibir Rabbi Kiva. Shema Mino, you see Rabbi Kiva holds his Yibum. Master Rabbi, Petsu Adaka Kushavcha. Listen to this brysa written by who? By Rebbe Kiva. If Rebbe Kiva said over this brysa, then it's a bomb cash on Rebbe Kiva himself. Because over here it says, Mephorshim the brysa, we're talking about kahal. We're not talking about gerim. What does it say? It says, Petsua dako kushav chasris adam azokim. Interesting that it brings here an old man in the same category. But it doesn't matter for now. We have all these people who can't have children. Whether it's, it's, it happened by an accident, he was born like that, he's, he's 95 years old. Oycholzim oymiyavmim. They perform chalitza, they perform yibum. In other words, we're going to see soon. It means if they performed yibum, they shouldn't, but if they did, they, it, 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 it's, it, it's chal. Ketzad, meisu, v'lehem noshim, v'lehem achim. These, the patsu adaka guy dies, and he has a brother, v'amdu achim, v'asu maimer b'nish yisayim, or he did a maimer, which is kiddushim de Rabbanon, or v'nas nuget, he, he divorced them, which he shouldn't have, but he did. The brothers who did Yibam, it's a good Yibam. Meisu Achim, the brother of a Petsuadaka died. You hear the case? First case is the Petsuadaka died. Do you perform Yibam on a Petsuadaka? Yivama? Yes or no? If they did it, great. Now, the brother of the Petsuadaka died. Now the Petsuadaka is the Yavam. Different case completely. Should he perform... Chalitza and Yibam. What's Allah? Of course he can't perform Yibam, right? He's a Petsuadaka. He's not allowed to. So. And if they performed Yibam, it's Kaina. And you're not allowed to be married to them. Now let me ask you a question. If a Zakin, 95-year-old, 
is miyabe mizivama. Why does he have to divorce her? If you're a petzua daka, leo be petzua daka b'kal Hashem, you're mechuyv to divorce. A zakin. Why should a zakin suffer? He doesn't suffer, says Rashi. It doesn't mean it on the zakin. Just to point out, write it in your gemara. Mishum shenema leo be petzua daka kushavcha b'kal Hashem. Alma asked the gemara b'kal askinam. Okay. So let's stop over here, unfortunately, but uh, we're getting to shorter dapim, so we shall be catching up soon. Have a wonderful day.